Okay, it is Luxury Fred, and I wanted to talk tonight about Baron de Rothschild Champagne. And this whole little segment that I'm filming right now started because my beautiful fiance happened to pick up a bottle of Rothschild Champagne, which I didn't even know existed. So let me show you the uh, bottle here. So again, it is Champagne Baron de Rothschild, and it is a non-vintage champagne, and I spent the last couple hours learning all about Rothschild Champagne. Now, I had been familiar with Rothschild as a wine produ producer, and of course their famous uh, Bordeaux wines, but I never even knew that they made champagne, and it's something that they've only started doing in 2005. Uh, they decided that it was a market they wanted to get into and because space is so limited in the Champagne region you can't buy vineyards there. You have to buy grapes from the farmers and the people that own the vineyards that are there. So the they decided that they were going to make the Champagne all from Chardonnay grapes and from Grand Cru Chardonnay grapes, which means it's from a specific vineyard, from a specific, the, the grapes that are used are all from a specific area of a specific vineyard. I'm not a wine expert, but I believe that's what it is. Um, so they decided to make the champagne and they wanted to use all Chardonnay grapes and they also decided to use only free run juice, no pressed juice. So when the grapes are harvested, 20% or something like that are pressed and they get juice from that, but they don't use that juice. They only use free run juice, uh, which is how cuvee champagne is made uh, with only that juice. And what it means is that the champagne must be aged for a much longer time. And some of the other champagne companies don't do that because it delays them bringing the champagne to market. So it costs money because the champagne has to age longer um, and you can't produce as much, but it, it supposedly makes for a better champagne. So I'm looking down at my notes here um, and there's a four year aging process. Uh, it's three years for their rosé champagne and four years for their brut champagne. Um, something interesting about the rosé, which this is not, is that rosé is made with uh, Chardonnay with champagne and then they add red wine to it. Most other companies buy a certain amount of red wine from specific growers in the region to add to their champagne to make rosé champagne. Um, Rothschild decided that they, since they're known for red wine, that they would start their own small little winery uh, on the property of where they make the champagne and they have a little tiny winery that's only used a couple days a year to make just enough red wine to add to the champagne to make the rosé. Anyhow, so this is, as I was saying in the beginning, although they started making champagne in 2005, it's a non-vintage champagne, but their standards and their characteristics exceed those of most other vintage champagnes. And a vintage champagne means all the grapes are from one year. So right now you can buy Dom Perignon from 2016, which means all the grapes are from, uh, I think it's 2016, all the grapes are from that one year. That's what a vintage champagne means. Okay, so if I can look at my uh, notes. Um, and the other thing I was uh, learning about this, it has what's called a low dosage five to seven grams per liter, and I believe that's the sugar content of the final champagne. So it has a very low uh, dosage is what they call it. So that is everything that I, again, an amateur, someone that loves to drink wine and loves to drink champagne, but I don't know uh, a lot of the details, but I wanted to share that because I thought it was fascinating, and that's basically some, some things I learned uh, just today about Baron de Rothschild Champagne. So now we are going to pop the bottle, right? My beautiful, yes? Yes, let's okay. do it. So my uh, beautiful camera woman 
it's back there, and uh, if I can do this somewhat uh, safely, somewhat safely, and somewhat. Uh, you want to do it with the napkin? See, if I was smart, I would have uh, prepared the bottle ahead of time. Yeah, it's not going to pop yet. I'm just taking the foil off. Okay. But I should have started beforehand. So as you'll see, uh, what I have learned, and we got a foil and then we have the, there's like a little metal cage, is that you want to preserve most of the bubbles. So when you open champagne, you always point it away from your eyes and the eyes of other people. So now I'm taking off the uh, metal. And then what I'm supposed to do is hold the cork and then gently turn the bottle until it just... Come close. Come close. Come close. Mm -hmm. till it pops like that. So that's what we want. We don't want the bottle shooting out because we want to preserve as much of the uh, carbonation, I guess you might say. Okay, so now I shall pour this. Again, excuse me if I'm not doing this correctly. Feel free to comment below and tell me the proper technique I should be doing. So it's got uh, a very golden color, and I watched a couple of champagne tasting videos, so I'm going to try to do this professionally. So it's got a sweet, fruity nose to it. Uh, there's lots of bubbles, but we just had some, what was it the other day? Uh, we had Tatinje, I believe is how you pronounce it, and the bubbles were noticeably smaller there, and there was more bubbles. So these bubbles are kind of on the, the larger side. And if my camera woman would just come from the angle because of the light there. There you go. Okay. Mm. So it's a, a fruity, a fruity nose to it. And it's a, it's a bright taste, but it's definitely that brute dryness. It's, it's, it's sweet. I'm not picking up any specific taste other than the sweetness. And on my tongue, I can taste that the bubbles are not the tiny bubbles in the other one. It's okay. So... It's good. It's good. It's, it's interesting. We've had three or four different champagnes over the past couple days, and uh, it's interesting to taste the differences between each one. So again, since my light turned off, uh, this has been a tasting of some Champagne Baron de Rothschild, which is very good, and this was about $100 in our local Albertsons supermarket. Okay? Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe. And please, thank you, please subscribe to my channel and check out, I have lots of other cool food, wine, and travel videos. Cheers.